everyone, I am Raimundo Morales, a marketing specialist here at Study in the USA. Our goal at Study in the USA is to assist international students like you in finding your dream school and connecting you with the right institution. We're delighted that you could join us here today for our session, Navigating Cultural Transitions, an international alumnus journey with Obulu a Network. Let me go right ahead and introduce Obulu to the session now. While we wait uh, to allow more people to join us, we'd love to hear from you in the, in the comments. Who are you watching us from? Also, please add your questions to the chat and we'll answer them as we go. Hello, Obulu. Good morning. Hello, how are you? I'm doing good, how about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. Uh, great to hear. Okay, for everyone who has just joined us, let me reintroduce myself. I am Raimundo Morales, and I'll be moderating today's session. We're incredibly excited to have Obulu Anetor joining us today. She is alumna of the University of North Georgia. Obulu will be sharing with us today her study abroad journey and how the University of North Georgia helped her achieve her goals. She completed a Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity in May 2022 at the University of North Georgia. Please stay tuned for the Q&A at the end of the session and feel free to place any questions you'd like to be answered in the chat. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Obolu, once again, thank you for being here. Let's get started. Great. To begin, can you share a bit about your background? When did you come to the United States and what to your education here? Um, first off, I, a little bit about my background is I'm Nigerian and I had initially came to the U.S. to visit some family members and I shared that I was also looking for admission for university. So one of the days we just you know we went around and UNG was one of the schools that came up and <laughs> I went in. Um, And so from there on, the application process was done. And <laughs> I was very much motivated by the people around me, as well as taking a tour around the university, which I was lucky to do. The senior was amazing. The um, staff around the process that I was doing through the admission was great. And honestly, during the tour, it was just a random student that gave us a tour of the school. And I think we got the most authentic part of UNG because of that reason. Yes, uh, the authentic is it's always great. And tell me, what inspired you to pursue your degree in cybersecurity at the University of North Georgia? What sparked your interest in that field? <laughs> so initially, I had begun with a graphic design major um, and a minor in, in computer science. So when I started, cybersecurity was probably just a minor at that point. So during my academic semester and after I got a master's degree in computer science, my advisors were like, hey, you should take this particular class. You know, it would give you an edge. And that one class led to another class, which led to another class, which led to a degree in cybersecurity. So um, just one class in ethics and security was what, ethics and computer security was what really sparked the interest and a very persuasive academic advisor. Yes, that, that is very interesting how you think you know what you want, but then you see other things that are available and an advisor tells you, try this out. And you're like, oh, hey, look, something I had never even thought That's why it's always good to have an advisor. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree. Talk about your ex initial experiences and challenges when you first arrived in the United States. How did you overcome these challenges? So so um, because I had already visited the year before I started um, university, it gave me like just just a little hint of what could happen, like, you know, the environment and food and scenery and all that. The real challenge was cultural shock. And I know like a lot of people are like, yeah, cultural shock is this, cultural shock is that. I personally would have been one of the people that were like, I'm sure it's a big deal. But I didn't realize how much of a big deal it was until I experienced it. And um, I was lucky enough to have a lot of resources to be able to tackle that. So the first point of recognizing cultural shock was having coming from an English background and 
almost failing an English class. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that was the real shock, but it was only because the English I learned was um, British English and coming over transitioning to the US English is very much different. And that was the first point of real shock for me. But the professor I had then was really amazing. He was able to allow me to revise that particular activity. And he referred me to other on-campus resources like the student center, the counseling center, and also speaking with like other people who are going through this experience or under international students who have already tackled that particular type of challenge before. Um, it was helpful, and I think I was able to succeed using those resources and relying on those resources that were given to me. Yes. Great, great insight. Many international students are curious about the application process in the United States. Could you walk us through, through your application experience at UNG and any tips that you might have for prospective students? Um, so my application was very much different because I was there in person. I was able to just do an, a hand in application um, and turn it in. And later on was asked to, when I finally got home, I was later on asked to send all my documentation. But the main challenge with that is making sure that you are able to, um, what is it? Where you're able to convert your grades for, for you know, the US standard. Because coming for a different country, the grading system, the school system is very much different. So I used WES, um, which was very, they were very helpful. They got it all done and they personally sent it to them. So I didn't have much to worry about. And I kept, they kept asking for like other documentation, which was easy to send via email or um, parcel. But it's much easier online <laughs> to just have it done. And then you see all the requirements there. You can just click in um, and then there's always a uh, academic, um, I'm sorry, admission advisor that's taking care of each person's case like I did as well. So they, they're always a point of contact to reach out whenever you're having like questions or concerns or difficulties and clarifications if you need some of that as well. Yes, it could be a bit of a challenge figuring out how to transfer your credits, how to get your application process. But like we said, having an advisor that is able to guide you and help you always always helps all right the next question is for you the audience those of you who are viewing us for those of you planning to study in the usa do you have any specific questions or concerns about the application process feel free to ask and we'll do our best to address them at the end of the session thanks so now back to our questions UNG offers support services for international students. Can you share some of your experiences with these services and how they benefited you during your time at the university? Um, so the main point of contact for international students in, at UNG is the Center for Global Engagement, and they provide an array of resources. Um, yeah, we're most we dare a lot. <laughs> That's why we, you know, meet each other sometimes and like commune and then, you know, it offers that support and point of contact for other international students as well. So some of those things include the airport shuttle, uh, transportation, and whenever you want to go back home, whenever you're coming back in as well, but you have to make sure that you schedule it before a way ahead. Um, we also had this thing that we did called monthly shopping where we would have a shuttle that will take us to different particular malls or outlet centers. And it would be like a fun road trip <laughs> for international students. And I was lucky enough to experience a few of them. We also had excursions where we'd go to um, go on hikes in different like waterfall areas or um, trips in like different attraction areas or a museum, in fact, and that was something that I think was collaborated with um, the art, an art club or something like that. So usually they have collaborations or like standalone events like that. And um, another one of those things that they have in common or in partnership is resident hall housing, because not all international students, majority of international students actually live on campus. So there are a lot of activities that they can do while living in a residence hall. It's called the Global Learning Community. Yes. And 
Yes. Yeah, so, and even um, other particular, other um, external, not just uh, Center for Global Engagement, but also Residence Life, SI, um, the Tutoring Center. There are other resources that are linked on campus that international students are very much encouraged to use as well. And I strongly would recommend like counseling service, especially when that cultural shock hits, you know, having someone to confide in, a professional to confide in, and also that support that, you know, everyone once in a while would need to pick back up whenever things get really hard. Yes. For your service is also one that is very, very much recommended. And it's one that I also use while also being an alumni. Um, they help you with like getting your resume done, prepping for interviews, whenever you're ready to take that step in looking for a job or an internship, or you know, just preparing, trying to figure out what you want to do in that stage. So they give you a very good leeway, a very good picture of what that's gonna look like. Wow. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. There, there is a, a plethora of support services for international students that, that, that should ease some of people's worries. Yeah, now, true. what are some memorable academic and extracurricular experiences that you had at UNG that contributed to your personal and professional growth? Hmm, that's a good question. Um... So I can give, I would like to give both. So there's a variety of options. Uh, so for academic, um, I was very much in close contact with my academic advisor. So I would air all the things I'm curious about, things I want to do, and they were very much helpful with like leading me to the parts that really work out. So at the end of, towards the end of my um, degree in cybersecurity, I was really much interested in doing a research paper. and. I was able to do research with two of my other professors, which also got published in one of our, our uh, publications at UNG, and it's something I'm really proud of and excited about. And not just that, but it was also presented in Italy <laughs> under the symposium. So um, having that, being able to be led to that particular opportunity was very much something that was very memorable for me, academically speaking. And then for extracurricular activities, I got like two different jobs on campus at different intervals, that is. So being able to help other international students as a resident assistant was one that I grew so much as an individual because you learn about like diverse groups, you, learn, you get training on different types of um, activities, if it's culture, emotional health, um, community building, leadership. Leadership is always one that UNG really emphasizes in. <laughs> and community. Leadership and community are main UNG slogans. And also with um, supplemental instruction, that was where I also did like one of uh, extracurricular activities. I was um, a facilitator where we would ha assist, hold um, study sessions enabling students to come into the sessions and revise what has already been learned in class. And the beautiful, beautiful thing about that is I would also sit in the session with them. So I know kind of like what materials you're receiving and pinpoint them into the areas that they're either having difficulty and assist them with that or give them resources to enable them in their academic growth as well. So I think like my favorite part about those activities is being able to give back in a sense from all of the resources I received in the UNG environment, whether it's being a support, a mentor, or um, being that point of contact for other students, both international and like local students as well, was something that I really was <laughs> very proud of, and I really appreciated the opportunity for that. Amazing. Yes, being involved in all these sort of things really helps you grow personally and professionally, so that's a good recommendation. Now, as we continue, remember that we'll be having a Q&A at the end of the session. And also, we want to know what factors are most important to you when choosing a university. Is it a location, a program, a scholarship, or something else? Please, everybody in the audience, uh, let us know in the chat what, what your priorities are. OK. 
Okay, Obulu, can you highlight any research or internship opportunities you pursued while at UNG and how they shaped your career goals? So, um, I kind of touched base on the research that we did a little bit um, in cybersecurity. And um, I think that enabled me to really make a decision on whether or not I wanted to pursue a master's degree. <laughs> so I'm in the process of applying <laughs> and I'm really excited. Also, it's a bit nerve wracking, like doing this process all over again, but for like higher education. And um, yeah, that research opportunity was what really sparked the interest to do more research and then go following a degree with a master's degree in cybersecurity. And um, for internship opportunities, unfortunately, I was supposed to do an internship while um, while I was on campus, but it was during COVID. So that really just put a, <laughs> put a lid on that particular aspect. But um, I was able to do the OPT program, which is study or, um, getting a job right after graduation. So that has allowed me some experience, like work experience, and also learn how the working environment of your American culture is. Yes, yes, having these internships is essential for, for your growth. Another thing that is essential for career development is networking. Could you tell us about the networking opportunities available at UNG and how they help you in your field? So UNG hosts a lot of um, career events from the Careers uh, from career services. So example of that would be where they have um, they have a lot of employers coming in to host this particular career events. They all have stands. You can interact with them. So they have like the business careers and they have like the all general student career events. So from companies as big as enterprise and as small as like arts communities. So you have like a variety of employers. Sometimes Chick-fil-A has like just a little stand in the student center that they come in and they're like, hey, are you looking to reply? There, you can even be an ambassador for Amazon as well in one of those like career events that are being hosted. There are also seminars as well that I know like the career services host. They give you like a little talk with other experienced alumni or other employers who are looking to hire people. And sometimes departments also include that where they bring in um, possible employers and they hold and host an event that they speak with other students who are looking towards a career in that particular field that they're an expert in. So I would say that the best case is keeping an ear down and UNG does a great, great job, great, great job out of advertising it. If it's like <laughs> in the bathrooms and um, notice halls, you always see flyers about this event going on. And even though you're not particularly ready to jump into that career area, you're always welcome to come in and see out of just curiosity, see what's going on, ask questions, and definitely put in the effort to explore those opportunities that are being provide, presented at that, those particular events. Yes, yes. Just even the fact of just being exposed to those things and that might pique your interest, it's always a great thing to have. And graduating with a degree in cybersecurity is a significant accomplishment. Can you discuss your future career plans and how your education and UNG prepare you for them? Ooh. Ooh. So I'm still starting off. <laughs> And um, I would say that I got, like, for this particular question, the transition from being a student and then being in the professional field of cybersecurity, the huge help I got was mostly from my department, my advisor, and then career service. They were able to introduce me to the basics, teach me the basics, and find me, find, get, create avenues where I'm able to implement those basics our department would hold events, they would hold like club meetings and ways that we can also partake in like the world at large. We have like com um, competitions. I know the code breaker challenge was one of those things that we're able to use those things that we learned in classroom. And we got recognized for those activities that we partook in. So having those experience and then having career self service helped me streamline those experiences I've had and create a resume that would allow me to get a job is very important. You do so many 
thing sometimes you don't even realize what you can include in your resume or how helpful it can be <laughs> so you're you know grasping at straws and you're trying to think oh what do i need to put in here they really create that um avenue environment where you can sit down with them have a chat ask them you they, you tell them what you're looking for what you want and they help you to get those tools and experiences you have and streamline it to where you want to go and um the support i got from my faculty as well is they also give you they open your eyes to different job opportunities you can get they'd be like you could do you could either be a tech you could be this that and they also introduce you to leadership positions as well and whenever there's anything going on any events they're very good at like letting you know about those things so you can prepare and be part of that and i would say like i'm mostly interested in research and teaching because <laughs> kind of have a background of that as well so i was able to do that in you know making presentations whenever we had um classes that were prior to do that and then presenting the research that I did as well so <laughs> that has really made me decide that you know what a master's might be a really great option that might just be for me huh? yes <laughs> UNG is known for its commitment to diversity and inclusion can you share your perspective on the university's inclusive environment and how it enriched your overall experience so initially starting out at ung there weren't a lot of diverse groups that i saw i might have been just not particularly involved in those particular environments i know the gainesville campus had more array a more diverse group while i was in the Dahlonega campus but with time like i would say in a span of one semester two semesters there were a lot more diverse groups there were a lot more international students that I didn't see before. And I got more involved in like the international students and then other parts of campus, which allowed me to see different diverse groups of people. So including like the orientation, the MSA, which is the Multicultural Students Association, and there are many clubs under that, as well as um, having been, being involved in the clubs all around campus, just academic clubs and um, non-academic clubs as well. Being able to learn from and ha share experiences with those other people was a significant part of it. Because sometimes you could just find yourself going through a hole and you're like, oh, you they have a seminar. And guess what is about, I don't know, Japan. It's an event about the country Japan and you have someone who is from that country give a talk about it and um, about that country and i'm like i didn't know the certain things and then it also inspires us to explore the world around us that inspired me to want to go to japan i want to see the cherry blossoms i want to go to that ex part of the world and experience the four different four seasons <laughs> in the span of just like a few days because apparently there are different different locations have different seasons at different particular times of the year which i found very fascinating and being involved I was also able to share my culture as well in a diversity talk and that also exposed me to make friends with different people which I'm still friends with now and those experiences are just marvelous and precious to me because I keep those long-term friends and I'm able to have those shared experiences I haven't been to Japan but I know some really cool things about Japan too or like different other aspects um, different different places as well so it's just it's a beautiful experience I would say you have a variety like of ages, both youth and then elderly student, um, older students as well, which is not something that I had thought would be um, popular, but UNG caters to a wild range of students. And I think that they're doing such an intentional job and good job about taking care of all those particular students as well. Yes, uh, yes, correct, exactly. I would say one of the most enriching parts of uh attending a university in the USA is the melting pot that is created where everybody shares their their culture and it's much different hearing like oh a presentation about Japan but once you hear from somebody that's actually from there and can make those connections it's that much more valuable so, so lastly what advice 
advice would you give to international students considering doing GI as their destination for higher education? And how can they make the most of their time at the university? Hmm. <laughs> I would say for how you can make most of your time in the university be open to as many opportunities as you can be open to you really do not know the kind of like there are so many opportunities at UNG just be open to tr learning new things be open to new cultures and be on open to learning something new yes that's the advice I would give <laughs> and then for UNG particularly um it's a great school it's beautiful and we have a great library <laughs> um and the whole like uh, student community is very supportive and very involved so don't be afraid of making mistakes or you know the feeling of being an outsider can be there but just know that there are resources that can help you tackle out any goal you're aspiring to be and <laughs> you're not alone you're never alone at UNG yes <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story and enlightening us with your experience today, Abulu. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. A special thank you to Abulu for her insights and for being an inspiration to many international students. Your journey is truly motivating. We will now move on to our Q&A segment. We'll make sure to address as many questions as possible. Thank you again once again for being here and sharing your journey with us. Let's see if we have any any questions here in the chat if y'all anybody in the chat in the audience would like to add any questions that they might have at this moment this is the moment to do it okay it says is there anything you wish you knew before coming to ung or the us any tips for incoming students um i wish <laughs> i had been really coached about cultural shock. Um, but I would say that it wasn't much of an issue considering the resources that I had. Um, but being more, more attentive in that orientation would have helped <laughs> because like everything is overwhelming that that first time there's a lot going in. But I would say that the most important tip would be have an open mind and just take it in. It's no need to panic like maybe your first bad grade is like g making you go in a rant like it's okay it's okay you'll be fine yeah. <laughs> i promise everything will be okay as long as you're able to reach out and use those resources that are there for you that is a great tip everything will be okay where do you choose to live and study at ung would you recommend on campus or off campus I was fortunate enough to do both. <laughs> so I did, I was mostly on campus for the majority of my time at UNG and then my final year was off campus um, because, because I felt like it would be good for me to have that slow transitioning, transition away from, you know, the on campus um, leaving. And, but for me, I would suggest the first few years, no matter what, just on campus is the way to go because it provides provides you with a lot of that support and resources that you might need in trying to finally settle down into a new country, new system, new environment, new people. <laughs> so it can be a little bit overwhelming, but being able to be on campus when you can receive as much help as you need is very important. Plus, yes, definitely. Here, I think this might be one of the most important questions that everybody has. Did you apply for any scholarships or financial aid? At um, UNG provides, uh, especially the Center for Global Engagement, provide us oh international student waiver upon your tuition. Um, that was one that with my GPA that I came, I had coming into university, I was able to apply and get. But there's a lot of difficulty around getting scholarship opportunities for international students and it's always good to check with your home country because your home country sometimes provides into um scholarship opportunities or if you're looking into like particular medical fields i know there's a lot of um scholarship involved with that 
And a good place to look for that is also LinkedIn, because <laughs> after I joined, I find a lot of scholarship in, um, information from various parts of the world, as far as Scotland, Australia. There are a variety of them. You just have to look them up and know, you just honestly just look up scholarships on LinkedIn, and you will be exposed to a variety of them if that's something that you're really looking into. Yes, LinkedIn could be a great resource for many career opportunities. And this is not a question that is in the chat, but I know some people might might have it. Were there any opportunities for part-time jobs or on-campus employment? Uh, there were a lot of them, honestly. The uh, So on-campus employment is very... I think you're very intentional of catering to students because they recognize your student first before you're <laughs> before you're an employee. Um, so they're really good about helping you balance your work and your studies. So whenever you're like, hey, um, something's come up or I need to study for this, rescheduling and taking care of your academics for it always comes first no matter what. I think that is one of the great things about working on campus jobs. They're both they're all part-time jobs anyway, so except maybe certain summer jobs that you do, if you're not a student or if you're a student during the summer job, those things are also taken into account while you're employed. Um, I don't know if there is anything selective between international students and local students, but I would say on-campus jobs are for everybody, every student. Oh, that's, <laughs> yes, that is key to remember. And let's see. For Balancing work and studies, uh, um, having a good schedule helps, and sticking to that schedule <laughs> really does help. Because sometimes you're like, oh, you know, there's a little distraction there or here. Um, while you're making that, that schedule, make room for distractions as well. Yes, having a monthly and weekly planner is a must, I would say, nowadays with so many things. Uh, we, we have one here that says, are you studying in school or university? I think maybe you should just, just join us. Oh, I am currently an, an alumni, so I'm no longer in a university. Yes. I graduated last year. Yes. I don't see any more questions. Anybody that would like to add any questions that y'all would like to answer? We're here for you now. Nope, I don't, I don't see any others. Um, well, thank you all for joining us today for this insightful session with Abulu Anetor, our remarkable alumni at the University of North Georgia. We hope you found your journey inspiring and informative. Remember that studying in the USA can be an incredibly rewarding experience, and universities like UNG are here to support your academic and personal growth. If you have any further questions or need guidance or on your educational journey, don't hesitate to reach out to study in the USA. Lastly, we would like to express our gratitude to Obulu for sharing her experiences and wisdom with us today. Your journey is a testament to the possibilities that await an international students. If you have any unanswered questions or you would like to continue the conversation, please feel free to reach out through our website studyintheusa.com and all of our social media channels. Finally, stay tuned for future sessions and events from Study in the USA. We're committed to providing valuable resources and insights to help you achieve your academic and career goals. Wishing you all the best in your educational pursuits and a wonderful day. Thank you, Bulu, for being with us. Have Thank you for having me. You Bye. as well. Take care. Bye. Bye.